In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to compute or determine unconditional joint and conditional probabilities. In particular, we are going to see how to determine these probabilities from a two-way classification chart. Let us start with unconditional probabilities. The unconditional probability of event A is written as P of A, P within parenthesis A. This is what you have been seeing already as simply probability. That's how it is usually referred to. To understand the concept of unconditional probabilities in a two-way classification chart, let us look at the following example. The following chart shows the breakdown of student enrollment at an educational institution. What is the probability that a randomly selected student is female? For the purpose of this lesson, let us consider that this is the total enrollment at the educational institution and that's all we are analyzing. So this is our data set. It is also the population because that's the total number of students that we have at this institution. Now, what is the probability that a randomly selected student is female? We know from our earlier lessons in probability that probability that a student is female can be computed as number of females in our population divided by the total number of students. So to figure out the probability that a randomly selected student is female, we need the total number of females and the total number of students. So let us compute the total number of females here. We are going to compute our totals. If you add these numbers across, you will see that the total number of females in our population is 2,710. We also need the total number of students, but to get that we will have to figure out the total number of males. So we add these numbers across to get the total number of males. And if you do this along with me, you will see that the total number of males is 4,420 which then gives us the total number of students at this institution is 7,730. Now we are ready to find the probability that a randomly selected student is female. So let's work this out. I will quickly change the color of my pen here. Now always make sure you write the event name and then the probability. So probability that a randomly selected student is female equals. We have number of females in our, pop in our population is 2,710 divided by number of students in our population is 7,730. So 2,710 divided by 7,730 is the required probability. As you can see these numbers are very large. An average person like you and me cannot comprehend what this means in terms of its size. That's why the convention for probability numbers is to reduce fractions to their simplest form. Here we can right away take out the common factor 10, which means the zeros would go away. Now 271 over 773, even this is difficult for a reader to comprehend. That's when we bring in another convention. We write probabilities in their decimal or percentage representation if the fractions are too large to comprehend. So you can work this out on your calculator and you will see that this fraction is approximately equal to 0.38. In other words, about 38% of this population is female. Now since we have the number of males already worked out, maybe we can work out the probability that a randomly selected uh, student is male. Now if you do not want to write the entire word male, please use an um, an improvised notation, but please write an event. Don't just put a number there. Probability that a randomly selected student is male is 4,420 divided by 7,730. And again, you want to reduce this fraction to simplest form or just change it to a decimal notation. So in this two-way classification chart, we had classification by gender. We worked out the probabilities corresponding to that. Now the other classification category was by major. We have the four different majors, broad majors offered at this institution. Now we can also ask unconditional probabilities related to the majors. 
As a matter of fact, with two categorizations by gender and four categorizations by major, there are a total of four unconditional probabilities that come right out of this chart. So for example, we could have asked, what is the probability that a randomly selected student is a business major? Now just like we had done here, probability that a randomly selected student is a business major would be the total number of business majors divided by the total number of students. So we work out the total number of business majors, it works out to 1709. And therefore, the probability that a student is majoring in business is 1709 divided by 7730. Now, I would recommend that you work out the three other unconditional probabilities for the three other majors and then turn the page on this lesson. If you have worked out all the probabilities, they look like this. Now, we know from our basic probability lessons that probability of any event lies between 0 and 1 inclusive and when we exhaust the range of possibilities for any criteria, the sum of probabilities equals 1. I would like you to see that before you move forward. Now that may be something that's intuitive for you. 2,710, 4,420, these were the breakdowns by gender and that was the total number of students. So of course here we have probability of each gender is less than 1. When we add them we have 1 because the gender categorization is exhausted. Same with the majors, these four numbers add up to 7130, so these four probabilities should add up to 1. I recommend that you compute the decimal, the equivalent decimal representations of these numbers. Make sure you see that check and balance and then move on to the next lesson on joint probabilities.